Golden State Killer Suspect, a former police officer, arrested after DNA match. Officials say more than 40 years after the so-called Golden State Killer began terrorizing California, raping dozens of women and killing at least 12, authorities announced Wednesday that they had arrested 72-year-old Joseph James D'Angelo, charging him with capital murder. D'Angelo's arrest offered a shocking, abrupt development in what had long been one of the most notorious unsolved string of crimes in U.S. history. The gruesome attacks unfolded across California for more than a decade during the 1970s and 1980s, shattering families and frightening communities. Then the crime stopped, remaining a mystery for a generation, with little sign the case would ever be solved. The trail ultimately led authorities to D'Angelo, a former police officer living in Citrus Heights, California, a city outside Sacramento. Authorities said D'Angelo who was an officer during the years when police believed the attacks began was found through DNA evidence obtained in recent days. Though investigators declined to elaborate on what the DNA evidence was or how it was obtained, they said it clearly linked him to the crimes that had transfixed them for so long. Authorities said D'Angelo's name had not been on their radar at any point until last week, but that they were able to link him to homicides and rapes from decades ago. The magnitude of this case demanded that it be solved, Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert said at a news conference in the California Capitol Wednesday afternoon. We found the needle in the haystack, and it was right here in Sacramento. Sacramento County court records showed that D'Angelo was booked into jail early Wednesday morning on two counts of murder. No bail was set, and it was not known if he had an attorney. The string of attacks for decades were actually considered three separate sprees, beginning in the mid-1970s in Visalia, California, authorities said, when dozens of home invasions and burglaries led people to call the then-unknown assailant the Visalia ransacker. A later series of horrifying home invasions and rapes beginning in 1976 in Northern California attributed to the East Area Rapist or the original Night Stalker included lengthy attacks, sometimes involving sexual assaults on women in front of their bound loved ones. Then a series of slangs involving couples in their homes in Southern California by the Golden State Killer lasted up into the mid-1980s It wasn't until 2001 that authorities connected the crimes via DNA evidence. Through 1986, the FBI said, the attacker killed a dozen people and raped 45. The victims were as young as 13 and as old as 41, they said. Investigators had said they thought the Golden State Killer may have had a law enforcement background, and D'Angelo fit that bill. Between 1973 and 1979, D'Angelo served as a police officer in two different California police departments, said Sacramento County Sheriff Scott Jones. The timeline meant that D'Angelo was a law enforcement official when the attacks began, learning how to be a police officer at the same time authorities now believe he was beginning an escalating reign of terror. It remains unclear whether this training and knowledge of law enforcement tactics played a role in how the case stayed unsolved for so long. Very possibly he was committing the crimes during the time he was employed as a peace officer, Jones said Wednesday. Jones said D'Angelo had worked for the Exeter, California. Police Department between 1973 and 1976, a department located about 10 miles east of Visalia. John Hall, the city's police chief, said in an interview Wednesday that no one currently with the department was there at the time. Still, he said, the idea that D'Angelo might have worked for the department was a blow. It's absolutely shocking as well as disheartening and disappointing, Hall said. Not only did he commit these horrific crimes, but he did it while wearing the uniform and enjoying the public's trust. The case remained an object of intense focus for many in law enforcement and the public over the years. In 2016, the FBI made a renewed plea and offered a $50,000 reward for help in finding what they called the violent and elusive individual. Beginning in 1976, the Golden State Killer is believed to have raped dozens of women in their homes meticulously planning intrusions, sometimes ambushing entire families, and killing several victims toward the end of the bloodshed, all before vanishing in 1986. The attacker also was behind numerous residential burglaries in the state, the FBI said. For relatives of the victims, the shock of D'Angelo's arrest and the charges against him left some feeling a sense of closure. Others were overwhelmed by the sudden news. Jennifer Carroll was sleeping in her Santa Cruz home when the text came in at 7.11 a.m. on Wednesday. When she awoke, 
she could hardly believe it. Could this really be him? A friend had typed out and sent a link to a news article. Almost four decades after Carol's father, Lyman Smith, and stepmother, Charlene Smith, were found murdered in their Ventura, California, home, police said they had found a suspect. She was torn by conflicting emotions. This is a hard one, said Carol, 56. There aren't really words for this. I have feelings all over the place. In my mind, I had him dead as a way to cope, so his capture is stirring up all kinds of emotions. Carol said it was a chilling feeling to know the alleged killer had been in the Sacramento area the whole time, the same area her mother and father had lived. In March 1980, her brother had gone to their father's home to mow the lawn, but he grew suspicious when the home's alarm didn't go off when he entered. He went upstairs to check on his father and stepmother, Carol said, and called 911 after he found sheets pulled up over their bodies. I hope to God he confesses, said Carol, who was 18 at the time, of the man now in police custody. In Citrus Heights, residents recalled strange encounters with D'Angelo, who neighbors said lived in a home with his daughter and granddaughter. Attempts to reach D'Angelo's relatives were unsuccessful. Eddie Verdon recalled meeting D'Angelo after moving to the area and found him to be nosy, eventually discovering D'Angelo on his property three years ago. When he heard someone around the property and looked in the garage, he found D'Angelo ready to flee on his bicycle. I stared him down, and he looked at me nervously, he said. I never really interacted with him again. Maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. Since the attacker seemingly disappeared, Investigators and amateur detectives have searched for him across the United States and inquired as far away as Australia. He was young anywhere from 18 to 30 Caucasian, and athletic, capable of eluding capture by jumping roofs and vaulting tall fences, the crime writer Michelle McNamara wrote in a Los Angeles magazine profile of the old cases McNamara, who wrote a best-selling book about the crimes, wrote that the attacker had entered homes beforehand, learning the layout, studying family pictures, and memorizing names in preparation. As a result, she wrote, when someone woke from a deep sleep to the blinding flashlight and ski-masked presence, he was always a stranger to you, but you were not to him. When a woman managed to escape a 1979 attack, McNamara wrote, she said she saw a man pedaling away on a bicycle. The attacker was particularly cruel, McNamara wrote, placing dishes on the male victims he had tied up and telling him that if he heard the dishes fall, he'd kill the female, whom he would then lead into another room to rape. Police first dubbed the man the East Area Rapist, since they do not believe he began to kill people until later. The first known attack took place in the middle of the night in the summer of 1976, when a man slipped into a home in East Sacramento County, raped a young woman and left. Authorities said the same man raped someone again a few weeks later, then raped people again and again. After a year, two dozen women had been attacked in the Sacramento area. One victim was said to be a 13-year-old girl whose family was home at the time. Two people were beaten to death with a fireplace log. Brian and Katie Majori were gunned down while walking their dog in Rancho Cordova. A man and his girlfriend were fatally shot in his condo, with a cellophane-wrapped turkey carcass found on the patio. The killer, McNamara later wrote, had eaten some of their leftover Christmas dinner before departing. The last known victim was 18-year-old Janelle Cruz, who was raped and bludgeoned to death in Irvine in 1986. Decades would pass before DNA tests linked all of these crimes and investigators realized that the East Area Rapist of Sacramento was the same man called Original Night Stalker near El Dade. DNA evidence has proven crucial in other cases, such as the East Coast Rapist, who was arrested in 2011 when one of his discarded cigarettes proved to be a match for genetic material in that case.